Hello, hello, Crystal here. Welcome to another video with the Interactive Immersive HQ. And in this video, I'm going to show you this touch design tutorial on how to make this connect feedback effect look. So I was inspired when I went to an Apple store recently and I saw this ad playing in the music section and they had this uh, cut out feedback look and it came it looked really cool and had this really nice effect. My partner was like, why don't you make that into a touch plan tutorial? So now we're here. And I'm like, let's not make it not just any ordinary touch designer tutorial, but also make it a connect touch designer tutorial. Uh, you don't have to have a connect. You can actually use any image that you want. You can even use a touch designer banana image. And I want to apologize that there's something wrong with my connect where it, it is kind of glitching. You can kind of tell. So I'll try and make my, uh, my viewer not active so you won't be uh, go as crazy as I have. So let's begin. So as always, we'll start with a clean network. And then we're going to put down a connect. Azure top. So in this video, I'm going to use a connect Azure, but feel free to use the connect to, or if you don't want to use the connect, you can skip the beginning section and just use like a movie, a movie and top. So I'm going to make sure I have my sensor on, and then I'm going to choose a connect Azure select and drag this into the connect Azure top section. I'm gonna change this to be player index. Awesome. And if I click on the middle, but, uh, middle mouse button, it says it's 640 by 576 pixels, but I want it to be HD. So I'm gonna align image to other camera. It's gonna take a little second to think. And now it is 1920 by 1080, awesome. And this common area, I'm going to change this pixel to be 16-bit float. And I'll kind of show you why I'm doing that in a bit. I'm going to copy and paste this. I'm going to change this one to be a color. Awesome. And this one, it is 640 by 576 resolution. So I'm going to turn off this aligned image to other camera. And now these two should be synced. And what I'm doing with this is I want to cut this out and say I just want this part of the place. And I apologize, my background is a little bit messy because I just moved. <laughs> so forgive me. <laughs> After this, I'm going to add a threshold. And the threshold, I'm going to lower this threshold number down to where I see a silhouette. So why I put in 16-bit float if it is in the use input, um, I don't have alpha be blacked out. So if I put in 16-bit float, then it is clear. Great. Awesome. I'm going to add a blur after this just so I can kind of have a little bit of a cleaner line. Uh, just increase this to somewhere that I feel a little bit happier. Great. Then I'm going to have a multiply top. And I'm going to hook this one up. And then I'm going to hook this one up. Great. It's not perfect, but this is kind of a little hack to have like a little like a green screen effect on, um, on a connect. Great, so I have this. I'm going to add a null and call this call this me layer. And if you don't have a connect and you just want to learn this technique, feel free to just skip what I just did and just put a movie in top here um, but just make sure it's the same resolution um, for what we need to do and you can put like a fit top and put it into 1920 by 1080 put this into the me layer rather than a connect section great 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 so next I'm going to add a box top 
And this box top, I want it to be in the same resolution, same dimension, uh, I mean, not same dimension, same ratio as my me layer null. So since this is 1920 by 1080, which is a 16 by nine ratio HD, this box size, I also want it to be the same. So what I'm gonna do is, actually, uh, rather than a box, I want a grid. So I want it just be flat. So the size, I'm gonna have 16 divided by nine and give you this fraction, but this, this ratio is the same as this. Cool. And then I'm gonna add a geometry. Great. I'm gonna put a constant material. And let's just add all the stuff to make it so we can render it later on. So I add a camera comp and I'll add a light and also a render pop. A great trio of Mios. <laughs> so this me layer, I'm gonna drag it onto this constant and then I'm gonna drag it onto this geometry. So I'm gonna start seeing, oh cool, look, it's me. And this constant, I'm gonna turn on this blending transparent to on. So as we layer over it, we can see the layer behind us. Great. And just sort kicks to show you what happens if we didn't do the 16 by nine thing, then you'll see that I am a weird, tall, narrow person. So now if I want it to be correct, I'll have the 16 by nine ratio. And see if I also do fit to this, it will also be right. Great. Awesome. And let's Let's do this layering thing happen. So I'm gonna first add a line sop. So this line sop, I'm gonna have it to be, so it is one here and seven. We can, we can play around with these numbers and I wanna be 10 points. So what's happening? I'm having a line, I have 10 points and I want 10 of this grid layer on each of those points. And why I have it here, because if it's the first one, this P, A, X, Y, or Z, it would be left to right, but I want it to be front to back. So I'm gonna add a null because it's good practice. And I want to instance this, I'm gonna turn on instancing, onto this translate. So I'm gonna call this uh, translate. And I must drag this onto translate op and make it to P0, P1, and P2. So cool, look what you got. We got a bunch of me's all layered together. Woo! Okay. <laughs> I'm weird. <laughs> so we have that. We're gonna play around this camera angle because this to say it. <laughs> but let's, before we do that, let's also make it so the back layer is bigger and as it gets closer, it gets smaller. Um, so we can actually see the different layers behind us rather than we can only see that if we're in a certain angle right now because I just cover the path back me. So what we're gonna do is rather than using a stop like we did for the line, we're gonna use a pattern chop. Create this pattern chop, it has this sin wave. I'm gonna change it to be a ramp. And in this ramp, I'm gonna change the length, which is the amount of samples to be 10, because that is the same amount of points. If it's not the same amount of points, you're gonna get an error and it's not gonna work. The instance you'll be like, hey, different number of samples, blah, uh, no. So, um, but I want it to start from being big to small, so I'm gonna change this range to be one, and it's to be zero, and range to zero to one. Um, awesome, and I'm gonna just 
I don't know, after this, and called this scale instance so I know what this is later on in when I reopen this. Um, so it's geometry. I'm going to drag this into a scale and just have it to be Chan 1 for all everything. And let's see what we got. So yeah, I'm, I'm small in the front and a big in the back. Great. And let's play with some of this camera majigger. Um, this camera, it might also depends on, for you, depending on where you are in your scope of your uh, connect. But what I did was I'm going to pull this back to be like, right now it's 10. Let's see what's happening here. Um, Thank you for sounds. Um, let's also actually this view change it to be orthographics. Cool. And this render top, I'm gonna make this into a square, like an album cover. So I'm gonna have this be 1080 by 1080. Let's see what's happening here. Cool. And I also I'm gonna add a null. Oops. Null after this render. Call this out. In between here, I'm going to add a transform because maybe I can actually from here zoom in a bit. So I'm going to make the scale bigger. And this camera also going to play with. Oh, yeah, it's an orthographic. So if you play with this, it's not going to do anything. <laughs> um, I What you want to do is go to the ortho width and you can scale it through here and the thing about this is when you're in the center you're going to get both equal sides so i have to make sure you're in the middle um but i am still kind of i'm going to zoom in look at that eye cool cool so that's that's getting closer i can play with it more awesome and also some different parameters I can play with is this pattern amplitude. So I'm going to lower this a little bit to be 0.6. Ooh. And then this camera change the width. Ah. So you can play around with this ortho width and also this pattern amplitude to get some your sweet spot. But I think something around 0 0.68 to 0.8 seems like it works for me. And let's fill up this background a bit. So I'm going to go back to my color connect um, and I'm going to add a blur to this. Now, Blur it out so you're gonna see my background. Ha! And I'm gonna layer this behind this. So I'm gonna also add this a bit. This bit, so I'm gonna have it be the same resolution 1080 by 1080. I'm gonna have this to be fit outside. And I'm do a composite where I just have this layer over. Cool. That's pretty much it. As always, thank you for watching the video. And if you make something cool, feel free to tag the Intactive Immersive HQ. With, and if you have any ideas or any things that inspire you that you want to see a tutorial for, feel free to leave it in the comments below. Thanks. Bye. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you're serious about taking your touch designer and interactive skills to the next level, I highly recommend you check out the Interactive and Immersive HQ Pro. It's the only educational resource and community of its kind for touch designer and interactive professionals. You can learn more by checking out the link in the description. And if you like this video, don't forget to hit that like button. And if you're new here, don't forget to hit subscribe and the little bell icon for more awesome free content.